Hello and welcome to this short video on how to pan and zoom in Adobe Premiere Pro. This will work for Premiere Pro CS3, CS4, CS5. The workflow is exactly the same in all of them. Now what I have is a piece of footage which is basically static. It's taken on the tripod and I want to zoom in to this danger sign here. And I want to start the shot fully zoomed in and then at four seconds be out to the same dimensions that the shot is or was originally taken as it's presently shown. So to do that I go to four seconds, drag my current time indicator till I see four either here or here and then I need to open my effects control tab which is just here. If you can't see effects control it's not showing for some reason click on the window menu and go down to effects control and click on it there and you'll find it comes up. Now to actually do some changing and to make the change easy I need to click on the word motion. If you don't have any of these up here, by the way, it means you haven't clicked on the footage. Click on the footage. If you don't click on the footage, you have nothing. Click on the footage and it shows. Now click on the word motion, because this gives you some bounding box. The quality looks less, but that's just for uh, preview purposes. Then twirl the twirly, the little triangle here, open. And then we have a whole series of things we can change. Now we know that at this four second mark, where our current time indicator is, we want it to be precisely this size and precisely this place. So its position and its scale is going to be as is at the moment. So we need to tell Premiere Pro at this point in time, at four seconds on our timeline, you must be this scale and this position. So we need to set what's called keyframes. To create keyframes, you click on the stopwatch next to the property you want to animate. So I want position, it's created a little keyframe, and scale. A little keyframe's been created and that tells Premiere Pro at this point you must be this place and this scale. Of course nothing's actually changed, we've just created the keyframes. It's when we create our next keyframes we create animation. So I need to take it right back to the beginning where I want to be zoomed in fully to this sign. So I need to scale it up. So I click on scale, click and hold and drag and it starts to move. And If it doesn't move fast enough hold the shift key and drag and it will move even quicker and that's going off screen. Now I need to change its position so I could scrub the X and the Y values here but because I have clicked on this word motion, this little icon, I can actually just click on the screen, click hold and drag it into position just like that and it's changed as you can see the position properties and because the stopwatches were clicked it has also created new keyframes that say to Premiere Pro, at this point Premiere Pro, you must be at these position properties and you must be at this scale property. And then we have animation. If I click play, we have animation. However, there are some telltale signs that this animation is not professional. And what they are is that it starts at full speed and it finishes with a jerk. If you watch it, bang, it's off at full speed and bang, it finishes with a bit of a jerk. So we need to be able to smooth the passage. So it starts off like a car accelerating, getting quicker and quicker and quicker, and then when it's coming to the end of its journey, it starts to decelerate and come to a stop. We want it to act like a car, which means we need to create what's called ease keyframes. How do we create those? Well, first thing we do is we drag a marquee. So click, drag around these end two keyframes, and then right click on them, and go down to this thing that says Temporal Interpretation and then we've got two things at the bottom, Ease In and Ease Out. Now we actually want to ease into these keyframes. We're saying to Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro, as you approach these keyframes, as you come into them, we want you to decelerate, to slow down like a car braking. So we click In, Ease In, and it creates these new keyframes. Now if we actually look at it again and either hit Play here or you can hit the space bar if it's selected and it much nicer, much more professional ending. But also we can do the same at the beginning. If we drag a marquee around these front two so they're selected, right click on them, temporal interpretation, we can choose Ease Out, which says to Premiere Pro, as you leave these keyframes, start off slowly and get faster and faster, accelerate like a car from standing start. Click Ease Out. Now, if you select your timeline and hit the space bar, it starts more smoothly 
and it ends more smoothly and you have really nice animation. However, there is a problem with this. When you start to expand anything, if I click on the, the um, clip again, you'll see all the properties come up, above 110%, you actually start to degrade your footage and it doesn't look as good. So there are other options, particularly if you want to replace this sign with something else. Or say I had a, a graph, a graphic on the screen, and I wanted to start off zoomed into the graphic and then pull out, and the graphic be clear for everyone. Well, if I have created that graphic or taken the picture of that graphic and, and created it in Photoshop, I can actually paste it on top and have a really high quality graphic, which means I can zoom in better. I'll show you what I mean. Firstly, I need to undo my animation. The simplest way of doing that is to click on it, hit delete, get rid of it from my timeline, and then bring in a new version. Now this is slightly too long because it changes clip towards the end, so where it changes clip, just there. I'm going to just trim it to make sure I've got that little bracket and pull it back to my, my current time indicator. So that's now my clip. Now the right length and no animation. Next I want to bring in my graphic. So if I double click on my project panel in this empty area here, it opens my import dialog box. And then I have a Photoshop document here called Danger Sign for Replacement. Double click on that and it opens a little dialog box asking me a question. What do you want to do with it? It's a Photoshop layer, what do you want to do? I've got all sorts of options, but actually I just want to merge the layers, which is fine. Click OK. In it comes, and if I double click on it here, I can see what it looks like in my source panel. It says danger, blah, 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 because this is just an example. So I can now click this icon and drag it to my timeline on video layer 2. It's not long enough, but that's fine, because I can get that little bracket and trim it and pull it out to be the full length. So it's now exactly the same length as my footage. And it's absolutely crystal clear full screen. So what I want to do now is simply make sure that that uh, zooms out or pans out so that at four seconds it looks great. So I can start full screen, go to my effects control, make sure the clip, the danger sign is selected on video two, not the one underneath. They will look exactly the same here. The only difference it'll be is a little warning up here it says sequence one danger sign. If I click on the other one, sequence one danger sign for replacement. So just make sure the right one's highlighted and then you can click on motion again, click open. Now we know at the beginning we want it full screen so we can say position stopwatch click, scale stopwatch click, which says to Premiere Pro at the beginning of this sequence Premiere Pro you must be full screen. And then I can drag it out to four seconds four seconds both here and here and I can start to play with the scale and I can pull the scale down put it right down but there's a problem can you see it If I start to move this into place just by clicking and dragging I've got a perspective problem even if I reduce it slightly it's going to look wrong because the original sign is at a different perspective to this sign so there is another trick I can do I can use something called the corner pin effect to make it fit over here and look far better. So firstly, I'm going to remove all animation by just clicking on the, the, the danger sign and hitting the delete key to get rid of it from my timeline and dragging it once again in to my timeline and expanding it to the full length. Next, I'm going to apply an effect. It's called corner pin. I know it's called corner pin. I might not know where it is in these series of uh, animation and video effects. So if I click in this search box and start typing corner, C-O-R-N, by the time I've got to N, it's selected corner pin. It shows me that it's in Video Effects Distort Corner Pin, and I can grab that and drop it on top of my replacement sign. Then, in my effects control, here is corner pin. Click on it to select it, and it gives me some control points. And then I can open it for animation and I can animate where these four corners will be. So I am now at four seconds. But if I go back to the beginning and say okay big, at the beginning I want you to be full screen which is what it is at the moment I can click these four stopwatches. It says okay Premiere Pro at this point this must be full screen. Then I drag my current time indicator to four seconds and I can drag because I've clicked the word corner pin and I've made sure that's active these control points are available to me and I can click and drag them into place click the next one 
and drag it into place. Click the next one and drag it into place. Sometimes they're a little bit hard to get hold of. Click the last one and drag it into place. And you can zoom in there if you want to actually get a closer look. I'm not going to bother at the moment. There, I've now put you could fiddle around with it and make it look as good as you like. I've now put the danger sign at the right place. So if I click away and I go back to the beginning and hit my space bar to play, I've got the danger sign in the right place and the right perspective, but that's not a very good animation. That doesn't really look very good. So what I want to do is get rid of that and I'm going to bring in, get rid of all the animation, I'm just going to delete the clip. I'm going to bring in another copy of it to video 2 extend it out fully and this time I am going to apply the corner pin effect again click and drag and drop it on the danger sign for replacement layer click on corner pin and open it up and I'm going to immediately I'm not going to do any animation I am simply going to take these four corners if I can grab hold of them and put them straight onto the sign like this one two three and obviously if you're doing this for real you would zoom in with uh, zoom in and uh, and get this even more precise I'm just doing it for a quick effect here I've got them in the right place and that's now in the right place I want to zoom into this but if I start to zoom it's going to be very difficult to zoom them both at the same time so this is how I can zoom in to both of these together and make them work I have to create a new sequence two ways I can create my new sequence either file new sequence or I can create this little new it item button here click on that new sequence it's going to open up my sequence and I'm going to call this my zoom sequence it's the same size as the footage which happens to be HDV click OK now I drag in sequence one and there is the whole clip which is the clip with the sign already applied in place. Now I go to four seconds where I want my clip to be at 100%. Select my clip. There is the word motion. Click the word motion to select it so I get my bounding boxes. Twirl down the twirly and hit the stopwatch for position and scale. Telling Premiere Pro at four seconds I want you to be this size. Now I'm going to drag my current time indicator back to the beginning and I'm going to scale it. I'm going to start hit the shift key to make it a lot quicker and then because I've got this word motion clicked I can actually physically grab the screen and pull it into place. Now if I click away I've got a beautifully clear sign and if I hit the, the play button it stays clear as I start to zoom out. The only other thing you might do is color correct it and what have you but that's how if you already have something that's very high quality you can drag it in and pull it around and I just want to show you see that this isn't actually lined up very well if I go to sequence one and I uh, I can actually zoom in say 75 percent and I can uh, open it all up and have a look pull it around here maybe pull this down move my screen around if I click on that layer and click on the word again here corner pin click on there I can actually get my corner pins and make them a lot more accurate I'm not going to spend hours on this but uh, you would you would make it a lot more accurate you'd also probably as I say color correct it there you go that's going to be a lot more accurate and that will instantly update in the zoom timeline here. Bear in mind I'm zoomed here I'm just going to hit the word fit there you go and that's made it fit a lot better so anything I change in sequence one will be updated in my zoom sequence. So that's how you can do zoom pan and zoom in Premiere Pro and how you can still remain with a very high quality image as long as you have something to put up there in the first place. I'm Andrew Davis. And I hope you found that useful.